All right. A very warm welcome to all of you uh, from our entire team of Emojar. Myself, Dr. Ria Das, and I'm a counseling psychologist as well as art based therapist for the last 14 years. So, here's a short take on art therapy since we are starting off with this particular workshop. So, uh, when I started off um, with school counseling, I'm basically a school counselor. I noticed that art interventions were great with children. So what I did was in between counseling sessions with parents, with children, I started off with certain small art-based activities, craft-based activities, something which was creative, not the, you know, the, not the typical talk therapy thing. And uh, I noticed that children, adults, the teachers, they opened up a lot more better than when I was just talking with them, you know, uh, either through CBT worksheets or just by talk therapy. As compared to that, this proved to be much more better. That was my personal judgment. But then uh, with passing time, I noticed there's something called art therapy, which was not so uh, prevalent in India. But of course, abroad, this particular uh, set of institutions are there who uh, give you particular training in this field. Okay, a formal training. But unfortunately, in India, still now, we don't have that. But uh, again, through personal experiences, I've found a lot of uh, improvement in individuals as just compared to talk therapy, especially with children. So with that note, I'll be starting off with uh, today's uh, workshop. It's basically a workshop series for the next 10 days. And um, a few pointers before we start off. You'll be needing your art supplies as put in the PDF. Uh, we made it a point that you get things ready beforehand so that we don't have to rush last moment. Um, we'll have certain self-exploratory activities for level one. Okay, where you will be uh, noticing your patterns, you'll be noticing how you're moving ahead, what are the, uh, you know, major uh, symbols in your drawings, or whichever work we'll be doing together. Uh, second of all, we'll be spending some time today to work on a art journal. Basically, that would be the first step. And then we keep it as a record for us throughout these last, you know, the next 10 days. Okay, so that will be a resource book for you as well, where you can keep down your notes or whatever work we are doing in the class, you can keep it there, stored. So that is just not loose papers here and there and then you forget about it. At least you'll have something to take away from the workshop where you can, you know, reflect and work on further. Okay, so art materials, I hope it is ready with all of you. Even if you do not have that entire list, you can always start off with something small like crayons easiest to start with and a4 sheets okay that will do for the time being and sketch pens if possible um i'll be taking your questions uh, at the end of the workshop maybe five ten minutes we'll keep it as a q a round where you can ask your queries if not addressed today we'll take it further down and um, for each day there will be an assignment given to you all you don't need to submit it at, uh, you know, every single day. You keep working on it and then we'll send a link where you can submit at the end of the series. All right. So uh, I hope these basic instructions are okay with all of you. Any questions at this point? All right. Great. So should we start? I'll be sharing a very short PPT. Nothing elaborate, but just to take this session forward. Uh, hi, uh, Ria. Just one small question. What is the duration of this workshop? I mean, how long it is? The start time is 8. And, and Today, time? it will take a little longer, about mm -hmm. approximately an hour or so. Uh, tomorrow onwards, it would be uh, for 45 minutes to 50 minutes because we'll be exploring oh. one one activity every day. Okay, got it. Thank you. Yeah. So, max one hour per day. Got the it. total duration would be for 10 hours. There are 10 days, so 10 hours we are keeping it in that way. Okay. Just give me a moment. Is my screen visible to all of you? 
not here. No, no, it is not. No. No, ma'am. No. I hope now it's visible. Yeah. Yes. Now it's visible. Yeah. Okay. Is the screen coming blank? Yes. Yes, ma'am. Okay. I hope it's visible now. No, you can't see the screen. No, no, no ma'am. It's wrong. We can see you. Sorry. Just a minute. Okay. In the meanwhile, maybe... Uh, I'll just work on that. In the meanwhile, all of you, maybe you can do a small doodle on your page. Okay, any doodle which comes to your mind, anything. You know, go back to your school days or college days. Those who are still in college, you can uh, relate right now. Those who are older, you can always go back to your school and college days and remember the way you used to doodle when you were bored. Ma'am? Yes, please. Yes, ma'am. Uh, the assignments will be given on the Telegram uh, group, is it? Uh, Telegram group as well as we'll send you a mail. Okay, thank you so much. Ma Is my screen visible now? Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma yes. Yes. Okay. okay, so we start off with art as a counseling tool. Now, uh, you must have come across these terms as art therapist. Okay, I'll come to that part where you cannot call yourself an art therapist, at least in India. I'll come to that part and clarify it. So we basically name this as art-based therapist or art in counseling or art in therapy. That's why you'll see everywhere we haven't used art therapy course. Okay, it's basically art in therapy. You can become an art-based therapist or you can become an art, uh, you know, practicing art therapist, but not an art therapist. Okay, I'll come to it later. So this is a brief overview about our Emojar and team. Uh, we started off in 2020, yeah, June 2020. And uh, we have on our team O3, Tista Roshmita, who belongs to my core team. And the rest of them will be taking you forward with the uh, you know upcoming days. And Anushka, Palak, Devjati, and Jay. So this is my core team. <laughs> Okay, what we'll be doing today is we'll look upon what art-based therapy is all about and difference between art making and uh, art in therapy, basically. So we'll find out the differences about what art is and what art in therapy is. Okay, there are major differences. Next is uh, we'll uh, go through the brief history uh, that's a, a very brief story or the history of art therapy, how it came into existence. And then we'll have the prerequisites and art therapy scenario in India. I'll touch upon these. What are the applications? Setting up the room. Many are wary about setting up the room, what all things you need. And we'll be doing two such activities. Okay, One would be a reflection activity. The other one will be preparing your art journal followed by the reflection activity. So this is what we are going to do today. So as we were talking about doodles, I hope you have, uh, you know, uh, discovered something on your page. So uh, can you tell me what it is? Maybe you can put it in the chat as well. Um, uh, Ma'am, can I share? Yes, please go ahead. 
Uh, ma'am, so this is like a very general thing that I do. I don't, I don't know what it means, but my doodling includes a cube always. Okay. Okay. And Fine. along with that, I make flowers which are always filled. I mean, I would never make an incomplete flower. It would always have some lines or something inside it. Okay. So if you All could right. also provide a meaning, it would be great because I really okay. want to know. Right, right now I want to intervene here. The meaning I would not, uh, you know, immediately talk about. Eventually, we may come up with the metaphorical meanings and the unconscious, the subliminal meanings. But right now, we'll just look into what your perception is all about. So, if you're talking about uh, this uh, flower which you always fill in, and the other one uh, you said is a cube. Yes, ma'am. Try and reflect as to what it actually means to you. Ma'am, to be honest, I have tried a lot, but I just can't gather anything. Okay. How does a flower look to you? How do you feel about a flower? If I have to ask you to maybe use adjectives for the flower. Ma'am, ma excuse me. Screen is not visible. What you are sharing, it is not I'm visible. I am not sharing anything. I am just talking to you. Don't worry. Thank you. Okay, okay. But somebody's yeah. uh, somebody's uh, sharing the screen. Uh, no, I'm only doing it. Don't worry. I'll just, you yeah. know, I can't see you when I'm sharing the screen. So I just came back to the main meeting. <clears throat> yes. Uh, so what does a flower to you mean? I'm just a representation of something beautiful. Okay. Something beautiful. And what else? I don't know. Yeah, I just could recall something beautiful. That's it. Okay. And any other adjectives which comes to your mind? Something that has a good fragrance or maybe relating it to my perfume or something like that. Okay. How does it relate to your personality? Does it have any resemblance? Does it have any correlation? No, I don't think so. Think about it. Okay, we'll come to all these uh, metaphorical meanings a little later because if we okay. discuss this right away, it can become very heavy. So we'll just take it as an icebreaker that whatever doodles you have drawn, like I can see a lot of it, uh, leaves, flowers, uh, multiple lines, swirls, overlapping infinity symbols. So what you try to do is uh, maybe put adjectives to each one of them. Okay, and try to understand how it is important to you, those objectives, basically. So for me, if I have to draw a doodle right now, I might just draw a flower again. I keep on drawing flowers or hearts. So maybe for me, flowers are colorful, flowers are uh, perishable. These are metaphorical meanings which I'm implying. Maybe perishable for me, I suffer from a lot of insecurities. So that can be... a kind of an uh, indication that yes, maybe this is what I'm insecure about. The major themes come out through your doodles. So we'll do it. We'll come back to this later. Okay, so moving forward, this particular chart, I feel, I wish, I think, I need, I hope, I want. What I would like you to do is draw a doodle for each of these. I wish, I feel, I think, I need, I hope, I want. Uh, excuse me, ma'am. Yes, please. Uh, ma'am, I had a question. So uh, do we have to draw it on those uh, FSI sheets only? Yes. Okay. Thank you. I wish, I feel, I think, I need, I hope, I want. So these are the areas where you can just start doodling on the page. The very first mistake what we do is try to analyze our art. Just forget about analyzing things. Forget about finding out meaning. You will eventually get to know. Uh, once we are done with these 10 days of uh, you know work, you'll see you, and, um, a pattern is emerging. You yourself will be able to analyze what's actually going on. My mind is blank. Uh, I'm not able to think anything. Like, okay. Only maybe you just shade. 
That's yeah, it, so. whatever comes to your mind first, just work on that. You don't need to think about doodling. Doodles are totally mindless. Okay, so. Ma'am, I can do in words, but what should I draw? I am also no clue. Okay, what should I draw? And I wish, I feel, I need anything. So that's going to open up your mind. You know, uh, if we are talking about this, you know, the right brain and the left brain activity. So uh, what we do on a regular basis is only activate our left brain because we are doing manual tasks, logical tasks. We are always talking about what is right, wrong, ethics, values, numbers, uh, what we know. That's the memory system which we always use. But what about abstract reasoning? What about creative thinking? We hardly engage in that. So the block, the mental block which we are facing right now is I feel we don't know how to doodle it out. So whatever comes to your mind, just put it on paper. There's no right or wrong way of doing it. Ma'am, can you That's present the presentation? Ma'am, can you share the presentation once? Yes, yes, please. One sec. So uh, for I feel, I just did a kind of a scattered cloud. So these can be just patterns. There may not be any meanings to it. Excuse me, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. Uh, is there any series like uh, first we have to draw for uh, I feel like no, no, that? No. no particular order. Whatever you feel, you can do. Okay. Whatever way you want to. Done, ma'am. Okay. Ma'am, can you please again share the uh, screen? Yes. Of I'm putting it in the chat because the moment I go back, I can't see all. I'm putting in the chat. I feel, I wish, I think, I need, I hope, I want. So there are six domains which you are drawing. And I'll show you mine. Oh my God. So I can't show you. Can you see? Uh, I'll just tell you what I did. Uh, for I feel I drew a very badly shaped cloud. And then I wish I did some flowers. I think I drew just circles, small, small bubbles like thing. I need, it's a zigzag mountain like line. For I hope and I want, I did just waves. Otri, are you here? Yes, ma'am. Um, will you be comfortable sharing? Because mine has a background, it's not showing. I have a question. Yes, please go ahead. Ma'am, were we not supposed to draw something but we actually want or feel or wish or of course you can do this is what I felt. So I just did it. Okay, so th those things could be abstract too. Yes, yes, absolutely. Okay, There's no so right or wrong things. You can draw concrete objects, you can draw anything which is abstract as well. Anyone who would like to share? Ma'am, may I? But yes. How? Like, okay. Can I share? Simply turn on my back camera and share like that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Sure. Sure. Okay, ma'am. Okay. I'll... Ma'am, next even I want to have a, a conversation for the same. Kashish. Yes. Absolutely. If you want to share it in the chat, I'm not sure whether you can attach uh, pictures. Is it visible? I have shared. Is it? Just one second. I need to stop presenting. Yeah, I'll pin your. Okay. I feel okay. She has written also smiley. I wish. I. I some kind of a lady. I. I don't know. Okay. okay. I so. think. I need. I hope. I want. Okay. Fine. Um, the next Hello. thing what you can all do is, as I told you, try to attach certain 
adjectives to each of these. Say if I talk about a cloud, a scattered cloud, I'm already using an adjective, scattered. So the feeling may be related to what I'm going through right now. Okay, these are very personal things. If you don't wish to discuss about it, it's okay. All right, so uh, the flower, I wish. Uh, I just want to ask you something. Yes. Like, for example, if I say that I feel unorganized and I, like, you know, draw something like uh, something scattered, scattered, or yes. I, I wish uh, to go on vacation, so just like, you know, vacation thing. So, are they, am I in the right direction? Is it like uh, we have to add adjective to vacation or how, what kind of vacation or something else or some more emotion I should work on? You can attach adjectives and, uh, you know, don't force yourself to attach ad adjectives. Whatever comes to your mind, if you attach it, you will see that uh, your conflict areas are surfacing. Yeah. Um, okay, can so I what if someone is feeling uh, numb, uh, mm -hmm. no, not feeling anything as such or just sad, Mm -hmm. No adjectives are coming into mind then. See, if no adjectives are coming, that means there's a mental block somewhere. So uh, what we do is when we are proceeding with the uh, today's session, uh, see whether you're feeling any different or not. Okay, generally what happens is there are uh, times when we just feel numb. We are totally disconnected from our environment. So a lot of grounding exercise, maybe you are doing something, you are crafting or scribbling. These things help to, again, go back to your reality. Okay, and break you off from that particular numbness. Okay, so what we'll do now at this point is we'll put adjectives to these, whatever we have drawn or written, or doodle and then we'll try to find out our current conflict areas whether it's matching with it or not ma'am i had a doubt so instead of adjectives uh, can we like write sentences like what i feel when what i for example if i feel i've drawn a uh, sunset scenery and when you told me to write adjectives i actually wrote a sentence like i feel like the warm sun during sunset uh -huh. so that's something that came to my mind so can we write absolutely like that? absolutely please go ahead okay so this was a very quick icebreaker you must be wondering but uh, you know uh, why not find out the meaning right now okay but what we will do is enable you to reflect on these 10 days and find out your pattern. You yourself will be able to analyze what uh, needs attention, what needs care, and what you need to do. Okay, and what are the conflict areas which you may be running away from? Okay, so this entire 10 days will be exploratory activities. We'll guide you through. Uh, I'll come to the three parts of art-based therapy, what we actually do in advanced courses and what we do in basic courses and how we can help ourselves. Okay. So moving forward, we'll do a quick check-in here. Check-in in the sense, on a point, uh, on a scale of 1 to 10, at this moment or today, how are you feeling? 1 being the worst, 10 being the happiest, you know, the best possible feeling ever. So for me, it would be uh, a seven. And keep this in mind, okay? So maybe you can write it down somewhere. Mom, can you repeat the last sentence? What what we have to write? Uh, it's basically on a point on a scale of one to ten points. How would you rate your mood to be today, or at this moment? How are you feeling or how were you feeling all throughout the day? One being the worst and 10 being the most, you know, uh, ecstatic. 10 means very happy, one being very sad towards the Eight. Day. Eight, ma'am. Okay, great. I can see a lot of seven, eight, nine. Five and six is also okay because it's the average. Anything below that, just keep a check. Okay, we'll come back to it. So I have rated myself as a 7 today. Yesterday it was a 5. So this is a check-in which we generally do in all sessions. When clients come to you, we do a quick check-in. 
as to how they are feeling and then uh, once we quantify our emotions it becomes easier for us to you know gauge how we are proceeding with our days or maybe even one day all right so we are moving on to the technical parts of art based therapy and then we'll move on to the activity so i'll quickly go through this we'll send you the reading materials because it's more of the theory part okay so uh, before we start sharing i would like to know how much you know about uh, art therapy or art therapy especially in india any clue anyone wants to speak on that uh, yes ma'am oh, yes i think somebody else said yes yes please go ahead uh, ma'am this is niharika this side hello uh, hello ma'am uh, so ma'am basically if we talk about professionally so there are hardly any places which are conducting this uh, only there are few institutes like you know unesco cid which offers a like a one month certification more so in dance that's more so in right. dance and movement though mit is just starting with an ma in art therapy program uh, which right. will start this year but again you know outside you need to have a, a credential there's a credentialing body which registers you with the board so there is atr or atr bc like you can register with the board and that's the highest level of qualification as an art therapist but here in india the maximum you can do is uh, take up an art research topic in your phd that too you'll have to look for a supervisor who can provide you that other than that there is not much uh, credentialing or licensing or degrees here yeah absolutely correct in india there is uh, no licensing at all you know you'll get accreditations this that diplomas one month six months and all these things will be there but there is no um, controlling body for monitoring art therapist as i told you in the beginning of the session you cannot call yourself first of all an art therapist because there's no module here and mit of course has started off with this masters level course but then to the scope of art therapy in india is very narrow it's growing now but you invest lakhs of rupees in that course and then you are left with nothing because that will specialize you only in art therapy not in counseling not maybe yes of course modules will be there but of course uh, it is better that you do your masters in psychology with whichever specialization you want and then move on to diploma courses degree courses not degree basically certificate courses and diploma courses and take up supervision supervision hours are very crucial for your experience because art therapy is so vast so elaborate and it has three certain phases in which you need to invest a lot of your counseling skills your you know insight your uh, the kind of knowledge which you will gather through the sessions you will have to put in use okay so we'll just explore this quickly <clears throat> thank you for sh uh, sharing manasi Ma'am, I didn't. It was Niharika. Oh, sorry. I'm so sorry, Niharika. Thank you for sharing that. Welcome, ma'am. Ma'am, can I add something? Yes, yes. Please go ahead. Uh, ma'am, I am currently pursuing my masters from Delhi University in with specialization in clinical. So, mm -hmm. just to inform that they are also floating art therapy as a paper uh, this right, time. Right, right, right. So, so it it is yeah. gradually, you know, uh, getting into the modules, but it is not. an independent field of work in india and again calling yes, yourself yes. an art therapist would be too much ambitious so you can always call yourself art based therapist only after you have achieved a number of years in practice full time practice so generally supervision um, uh, 1.5 hours of supervision per month is required if you are practicing full time as a psychologist as a counselor or a clinical psychologist whichever field you are working in you need 1.5 hours of supervision every month and that can go up to 2 to 3 years of experience so after you do it you can call yourself a art based practitioner or art based therapist but not an art therapist no matter who claims it it is not possible in india at least and if you can go abroad invest lakhs and tons of money over there because it's very very expensive outside 
okay and people take loans to complete this art based therapy but of course there is scope if you want to do your higher studies abroad you can always go ahead and do it uh the flop side of it is it becomes very very limited and streamlined so it's always wiser to take up masters or if you already have a masters or a phd and then you can take up as she said research work or maybe uh, practicing arts some diploma courses and then learn the trick of the trade you know you need to market yourself as well that way so uh what is basically art therapy now we need to find out what actually it does uh we all know about art how it you know elevates our mood how art has been an integral part of us throughout history if we look back we see that so many expressions are done through art if you look at the temples if you look at the paintings cave paintings every culture every uh, tribe every uh, civilization has some form of art based you know a depiction of their everyday life so that was a silent way of expression or communication for the further generations so typically here also in therapy in full blown therapy what we generally do is talk okay talk and uh, guide the person we majorly do talk therapy now a lot of other modules are coming up cbt is there we fill up uh, you know uh, sheets of paper and there are questions reflective questions and all but art takes it to a different level altogether people who have communication problems those who can't express themselves who are facing mental blocks okay those who are very silent they are very very uh, what do i say they don't open up in counseling sessions so how would you proceed you cannot just keep on poking that no tell me tell me it's not possible right so what we do is we with our expertise of course we push a few of these art activities which can loosen up that hindrance or inhibition in the clients and through these simple activities a lot of things come up during the sessions which can trigger more conversation between the therapist as well as the uh, individual who is taking up counseling so proceeding with that this is the basic definition of art based therapy so it is active art making it is not only art it is also about crafts it is also about uh, clay modeling it's all about your experience with the particular activity which you are doing okay it is not drawing and sketching it can be any form it can be a collage it can be just uh, painting without pencils it can be just sketching it can be scribbles it can be doodles it can be a whole lot of things which will let you be in the moment create a lot of mindfulness and a lot of grounding experience so that you come in contact with yourself and then work through your difficult areas okay. i'm sorry to interrupt can you please zoom the uh, slide oh, for yes, the yes, yes. yeah okay. thank you so much we'll share the slide so you don't need to write down anything at this moment no no we are not writing but at least it will be easily visible properly yeah, sure. yeah thank you um for mental health a very number of psychological disorders uh, have taken up art based therapy where it led to a lot of self expression okay so um it's not only the day to day problem which we are facing it can be uh, certain psychological issues which are serious as well like depression schizophrenia and the like they uh, these studies have been conducted and a lot of difference a lot of uh, improvement has been seen in these populations as well so brief history palak uh, will you be comfortable sharing the brief history with the yes. rest of the group yes yes definitely um okay so i'll throw some light on the brief history i'll take you through the brief history of art therapy um so even before the term art therapy was coined there have been instances uh of using art as a tool for betterment of emotional health and overall well-being in late 19th and early 20th century psychiatrists became interested in the art created by their patients the main fascination was that through their art the psychiatrists could make now make sense of what has what had been consider, considered irrational to this point while most doctors 
viewed this just as curious observation. There was one person, uh, Paul Mac Simon. He conducted a detailed study of art created by those suffering from mental illness. Uh, then there were contributions made by Cesare Lombroso in this field. There were studies conducted by the psychiatrists that concluded that art created by those suffering from mental illness were a reflection of their own conflict and might therefore aid in understanding them better. It was in 1915 that Margaret Nomberg, often referred to as the mother of art therapy, established the Walden School of New York with the belief that children should be allowed creative freedom and that if they pursued fields in which they are interested, it would lead to healthier development. The term art therapy was formally coined in 1942 by a British artist named Adrian Hill. And interestingly, he came up with this uh, just after having found immense benefits from painting and drawing during his battle with tuberculosis. He was of the belief that the value of art as therapy lay in completely engrossing the mind and the fingers, thereby releasing creative energy. This helped the patients build a strong defense against his misfortunes. Adrian Hill started his own practice at, uh, of art therapy and was soon joined by Edward Adamson, who extended this practice in England. Then, then the British Association of Art Therapists was founded in 1954. The American uh, Art Therapy Association, AATA, was founded in 1969 in Louisville, Kentucky. Uh, so that was it. And uh, I think ma'am will take it forward. Before that, I would want to say something that every individual has their own unique way of expressing themselves and art is one of them. And I believe it is a very intuitive process and a wonderful way of exploring our inner self. And I hope you all have a reflect reflective journey all throughout. All the very best. Yes, ma'am, over to you. Thank you, Pallak. Thank you so much. Uh, so this was more or less the history of art therapy. There will be more and more articles and you can read up. We will send you the materials as well. Any questions at this point? Anything you would like to ask? We'll take a few questions at this juncture. Hi, ma'am. Um, I have a question. Um, it's a more general question that I'd like to ask in terms of art therapy. Like when we talk about Rishak and other projective tests as well, when we use art mm -hmm. as a technique. Mm -hmm. um, similarly, like Palak Ma'am mentioned that, you know, art is very, uh, it's different. So the interpretation of it is also very subjective. Right. But, right. So when we, especially when we see clients and I, I speak as a clinical psychologist, mm -hmm. uh, there, so, so everyone has their, the person drawing it will have a completely different um uh, I mean, if you'd ask them to interpret it, it'd be completely different than what we as therapists would interpret it. Mm -hmm. Then how do we, um, how does that work? That how, how does the dynamic sort of work? And I wanted to ask you mm -hmm. because you've already been practicing counseling and therapy together, I mean, art therapy. So I just like to know that. Yeah. Yes, uh, Ankita, it is basically when we are starting off with art-based therapy, especially in India, you're talking about Roshark. Roshark is a totally different test altogether. It's a projective technique. Yeah. It's not an art-based therapy uh, technique. Correct. Okay, yeah. so uh, there you already have a set of stimuli on which you're projecting your unconscious. And then they have this particular uh, score settings. Mm -hmm. that are already there where you need to score Correct. properly and then you go ahead with the analysis. But in art-based therapy, there's a very limited number of uh, tests which you can do. Mm -hmm. okay, that generally comes in when you're analyzing art. Okay, mm -hmm. and a uh, very less amount of research is also being done. And that's why art therapy is not supposed to be the only source of, uh, you know, uh, counseling in, in your counseling sessions. Mm -hmm. It is not credited that way. So along mm -hmm. with this blend method, when you're counseling or you're using psychotherapy, you blend mm -hmm. these art strategies into your sessions so that clarity is there. Correct. You cannot pinpoint, Correct. you cannot say, as I, you, uh, we all were jumping. When we, I also started, I was jumping on analyzing what my doodle means to me. Correct. Yeah. That's the first tendency which we have. Are a bold though. 
ये इसका मीनिंग क्या है अदरवाइज यू आर नॉट एन आर्ट थेरेपिस्ट इट नेवर हैपेंस दैट बट इट फर्स्ट हैज अ डिफरेंट मीनिंग फॉर मी फ्लावर मी मीन टोटली डिफरेंट फ्रॉम व्हाट यू व्हाट इट मींस टू यू यस मैम इन आर्ट बेस्ड थेरेपी वी इनेबल द पर्सन टू फाइंड आउट देयर ओन मीनिंग्स एंड देन गो अहेड विद द एनालिसिस and it doesn't okay. happen in one activity it is a series got okay, it ma'am series of days that you lay out your artwork and then see what are the patterns which are coming up got Certain it ma'am things which you already know which you don't want to face it that is the mm-hmm. most common thing which we come across other things mm-hmm. are part of your unconscious which is more or less related to metaphor analysis dream analysis and all got it right in concept got okay, it so the uh, analyzing thing comes way later Correct. After series of works, right? Uh, ma'am, one last question from my side would be that, uh, uh, rightfully pointed, like how Rashak, T A T, a lot of other projector mm-hmm. tests do have a scoring card, scoring sheet. But uh, how does it work when it comes to um, attachment, like bird's nests, or mm-hmm. you know, a house tree person? Because there's no formal document per se of it, right? So then, how do we do the interpretation of that? These tests are very old. you know and yeah. no modern uh, tests are developed yet because of Credible. the low credibility low, low reliability and validity mm-hmm. so what yeah. now people are doing is shifting to self exploratory activities in art therapy which becomes much more safer because i am not telling you what it is all about you right, are exploring right. and you are telling me it's a non directive way of approaching got it so what, whichever tests were there it's still doing its circulation it's always good to know a few pointers but then mm-hmm. also we tell them that these findings you cannot take it very seriously and we never share the findings with them correct okay, yeah this means what this means that never it is just for our screening that we come across these and see we tally it as per our counseling sessions Okay. got it yes. it's not only we are not relying on bird's nest drawing we are not re- relying on htp we are not uh, relying on uh, drawing analysis and that's a vast area drawing analysis metaphor analysis mm-hmm. and all those things so we are not only relying on that we are mm-hmm. uh, finding out the pointers the main aspects and then we are working on the counseling sessions that's got it ma'am okay thank you so much that also comes the rating scales which we generally engage in yeah Okay, so it's a holistic thing. You cannot become a uh, uh, what do I say? Uh, totally an art therapist, and you don't do anything else. That never Correct, works yeah. out. Okay, get it. So I hope this part is clear because a lot of misconception revolves around this. Yeah, it, this does. Thank you so much, ma'am. Thank you for that Thank beautiful you. explanation. Thank you for asking this question. Um, someone wrote something. I'm really bad at art. I'm coming to that. Okay, so it doesn't really matter. Whether you're good or bad, uh, I have a question. Can I ask? Oh, uh, can we take it a little later, please? Yes, Otherwise, yes. we never finish. We'll keep on talking. Sure, sure, sure. Okay. Uh, so this is the basic difference between art therapy and art class. Um, in art therapy, what we do is there is um, a counselor or a psychologist, a professional who's trained in psychology uh, with a psychology background, who's taking your sessions. In an art class, it's more like an art teacher who's trained in art. Okay. Okay, full screen, screen please, ma'am. Yes, please. Full screen to the slide, please, ma'am. Sorry. Yeah. So the next point is it uh, the art therapy session is generally very confidential, just like your counseling sessions. Okay, there's no difference in the confidential part, but it does occur in groups. So you have a, a group contract, and then you get into that particular safe space, and then whatever is. exchanged is within that particular group a small number of people say 5 to 10 maximum and in art class there's nothing called confidentiality you are given a particular task and then you master on that task like you are supposed to draw exactly what you're expected to in the most appropriate way but in art therapy it's more about self expression you need not be an artist neither the counselor or the art therapist needs to be an artist you need not know what art is you need not know how to draw uh, you can be a, a very uh, you, you know uh, a pathetic uh, uh, artist but it's okay okay if you label yourself that i do not know art i am really poor at it it's all right it doesn't matter in art therapy but of course in art class you need to have that aptitude so that aptitude thing is totally missing in art therapy 
okay someone who doesn't know art it doesn't matter at all you can always take up even for counselors or professionals you can always take up art based uh, therapy as a propagation medium in your sessions you need not be an artist so this particular point is extremely crucial when you're sitting with your client and telling them they will tell you that i don't know how to draw you have to make the situation comfortable and make them understand in a way that yes you know you, you need not be uh, a very learned person in art it hardly matters it's just the process which you'll be engaging in not the product okay so these are a few pointers which i wanted to share and in an art therapy room one second there should be minimal distraction. This is common for both, but of course, uh, you can have your art therapy set up even in your counseling setup. Okay, you can keep the basic minimal uh, stationery required with sketch pens, crayons. These are easy to handle. And maybe a few set of watercolors or uh, the uh, watercolor set which you get, those cakes which you get, you can keep those and a few sheets of thick paper. Okay, why thick? Because that helps in uh you know uh, that gives out the best possible uh, work on the paper if you keep thin low quality paper it just smudges it kind of tears apart so that can be a big mess so invest in good quality paper and a few basic stationeries which are required okay so this is the difference prerequisites for becoming an art therapist, I've already discussed, just going through this very briefly, you should have a psychology background where you're trained as a counselor or a therapist or a psychotherapist or a clinical psychologist. Along with that, you need to take up diploma courses, certificate courses, whichever way you can, you know, acquire knowledge, because knowledge is one thing which you need to have while you are conducting these sessions. And you need to know a lot of strategies which you can use in your sessions. Supervision hours comes right after you do your diploma because it's uh, very important for your insight as well. Um, how to experience clients and what exactly to take up, like which are the strategies which I need to put into the session in order to get the fullest out of the sessions. So 1.5 hours per month for a full time practitioner, more for people who are just working part time. And you can call yourself all these titles but not an art therapist, please mind this in our country because we don't have a regulatory body in India. <clears throat> not for the time being at least. Hello, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. Can I ask one question? Yes, please go ahead. Uh, actually, I am uh, currently pursuing gender studies. Mm -hmm. So I am not, you know, belong from psychology background, but mm -hmm. in my, you know, course, I have studied health psychology, uh, where uh, stress, uh, stress was, uh, one, you know, chapter. Mm -hmm. So, and uh, from a long time, you know, I want to, um, learn this art therapy course. Mm -hmm. So, uh, can I, you know, go for uh, it or uh, uh, I have, you know, some kind of a psychology background for learning? Uh, it is, ma'am, it is always better if you can take up certain, you know, uh, distance courses as well in uh, counseling, first of all, because you need to know, as I've already discussed so far, you need to be a uh, very... Uh, thorough with your counseling skills and you can use art based therapies as just a tool in your counseling sessions not a whole thing which you're only dependent on okay so it's important to get counseling skills training for yourself uh, and then you can call yourself an art based therapy coach but not the uh, practitioner of art therapist or art based therapies these won't be applicable because you don't have a psychology background you can become a coach where you can train people how to you know, look through their art, create art, and then understand what they're going through and what you can work on. But you cannot be a therapist as such. Okay, this is a difference between a coach and a therapist. People who are not from psychology background, you can take up counseling skills, training, you can take up supervision. Only after that, you can use art as a medium in your counseling sessions. Okay, and you can call yourself... Remember. Um, so, ma'am, what should I, you know, go for uh, a 
a normal you know supervision course or any uh, distance learning course in a psychology or particular yeah. yeah you can take up counseling diplomas where you they teach you counseling skills and then you can take up supervision and practice in both and of course you have to do your diploma in art based therapy as well okay so both things you have to juggle okay, between so uh, art based intervention as i told you there are three levels to it the first level generally uh, engages in expressive art where you are just expressing yourself and engaging in that particular activity for a lot of catharsis uh, relaxation grounding so all this is about expression only the next part is exploratory where you are exploring all these symbols which are coming up you know uh, through your art series you are exploring trying to understand trying to uh, get meaning to it and then finding patterns as to what are your major loopholes or the, what are the major areas you need to work on followed by the analytical part which is in the advanced courses or diplomas where you are engaging in analysis of your art but uh, over your analysis is just for the therapist not for the person seeking counseling because if you give them certain directive answers to what they have done they will have a tendency to you know rely only on the analysis and forget about what they have worked through all far all throughout uh, all these analysis metaphor doodle dap and all these other techniques which we have is basically for your insight how it's going to be and how you're going to lead your sessions or what are the loopholes what can be the diagnostics of this particular person and then work upon it accordingly the other counseling skills so in level 1 we'll be majorly expressing uh, you know engaging in catharsis and expression and i'll show you how to find patterns a little bit of it and we'll take it forward the art therapy room basically it should be of light color as compared to uh, counseling rooms it's almost the same light walls enough room to move around people who don't have such rooms it's okay you can have a setup in your counseling room itself keep uh, maybe a cupboard allotted to only art materials invest in good quality art materials because that can uh, you know get you a lot of difference when you engage in art with cheap materials it will not give you uh, that relaxation or that catharsis effect so invest in that i'll be talking about all these crayons watercolor when to use it and what are the effects of these particular mediums i'll be discussing it tomorrow and good quality modeling material such as clay or uh, you can also keep certain stones sand all these come in handy when you have a very stressed person who's not opening up they can just you know tweak around and they kind of open up after some time because they relax themselves You uh, you should also have magazines, old magazines, which you can keep stacked in some place because that can come handy when you're doing collages. Okay, and any kind of junk material which you have can come in use when you're doing certain group uh, therapy sessions or maybe even collage with your client. And the room should be as silent as possible, away from distraction. properly lit and there should not be too many things uh, on the walls because that kind of gives ideas so when you're engaging in art therapy there should not be any cue which you're giving to the person so minimal distraction should be there and you can have a soft board where they can <clears throat> pin up their work they can reflect they can come back and see you know you can have that pin up wall as well okay so are we ready for the art journal uh i hope you all have your materials with you all of you okay if not maybe i can give you just a minute and then you can get it um we'll not be able to finish the entire thing today but i'll just give you the basic instructions and why you need this art journal uh, so that you can work on it and come back tomorrow with it okay or if you already have a ready made journal you can use it i keep using these can you see maybe ma'am it's not visible uh just a minute i'll 
show you from the other phone. Is it visible? Ma'am, it's kind of a spiral binded diary. Yes. Yeah. It's a spiral uh, bound white sheets inside. Okay. I'll show you further. Generally, this is what I use as my uh, art journal whenever I feel like drawing certain things or expressing myself and all. So, uh, I'll show you one thing. Which I came across and I drew it. This is the evil eye. And I was at one point of time, I was feeling very threatened about things. So I kind of drew this and I did not write anything as such, but it was kind of a reflection that maybe I'm seeking protection, emotional protection or something like that. Uh, this was one of the instances. You can have this hardbound diary because it helps you to keep everything in one place or you can make your own. So what you do is, since you have these sheets of paper, you put them together, either through glue, like make it into a copy. Okay, maybe you can fold the A4 sheets if you want to keep the entire uh, A4 sheet, you can keep it. But I would always recommend you to use smaller sheets of paper when you're starting off with your clients. Okay, and this is the first thing which we generally do, engage in this particular activity. You also do it with them. You help them. If you have younger clients, they'll have a lot of fun doing it. If you have older clients, you can keep certain um, good quality papers stapled together and you can give it as a handout when they come in. But the first sheet of paper, the cover page, you need to ask them to work on. Okay, so uh, maybe you can quickly do... Um, Fold the paper and keep it ready. You can have these larger. One second. <clears throat> you can have these larger art journals also. Whichever possible. Whichever is possible for you. You can keep these smaller ones also. Handy. Because they can take it. Um, can you please. I mean, your effect is making all of it blur, so I could not see anything. I'm showing it from the other phone. Am I visible? Wait, I'll pin myself. Yes, you are. Yeah, can you see me? So this is the smallest. Okay, don't go beyond this, uh, below this particular uh, size, because then working would be very difficult. You can always go for the A4 sheet size also. A little lesser than A4 sheet, but can work on that as well my recommendation when you're starting off use smaller ones because it's easier to fill up okay and it doesn't get overwhelming for the person who's engaging in so um this would be your homework for today that you have to make your art journal. Uh, it would be great if you can make your own. If you don't have time to invest, you can always buy one or just staple together pages that will also do. Okay, so the first activity which we'll be doing today is on the cover sheet. Okay, that will be your cover for the journal. Okay, on the cover sheet, what you're going to do is write your name in block letters. Block in the sense, maybe you can bold it out, either with a pen or a pencil, and write your full name. If it doesn't fit, this way you can turn the paper into landscape and then write it down. Should we do it now, ma'am? Yes, yes, please. Okay. So if this is your cover, Okay, what you do is write down this way or this way, whichever way you want to. I'm showing you on a sheet of paper how I'm writing. There's no right or wrong way, but if you can do it this way, it would give you enough space to, uh, you know, work on it further. So I've done it this way. Can you see? 
Yeah. No, ma'am, it's not clear. Yeah, I can't see. One second. Again, I have to myself. In the second camera, we can see. Maybe? Yes, it is similar in the other font. Yeah, this font would be easier, okay, because you can fill up a lot of designs inside there. Okay. Yes. Whichever way, there's no hard and fast rule, but this will give you a lot of space to design and work on it. <clears throat> so after you are done with this, now comes the most difficult part. Uh, you have to write down one adjective, one positive adjective with your starting letter. Name, starting letter. Mine was coming ravishing, but then I thought, okay, that would be too much for me. So I just chucked it away. So I'll think about something else and then uh, write down. But also keep a note uh, of whatever came to your mind first with the letter. Okay, we'll come to it later on. Just keep a note of it, write it down somewhere. Uh, Ria, could you please repeat what you told? Uh, it would be the first letter of your name. Mine would be R. Yours, I don't know who is asking, sorry. Um, the first letter of your name, you have to think of a positive adjective and then keep a note of it. First of all, whatever comes to your mind, and as I said, I just chucked it off. I was thinking about something else. So I'll be working on the other part, not that word which came to my mind first. Okay, so just keep a note if something comes up, but you don't want to write it. Okay, the first thing. So the first letter of your name, you have to think of an adjective. <clears throat> Should we write it there on the paper? You can write it down. You can keep it aside. You can decorate it later. Okay. Whichever. You can write down at the bottom of the name where you have written. Okay. I can't find any adjective with R very surprisingly. Um, can you all help me? <laughs> Maybe Rational. I can pick it up. Resilient. Resilient. Yes, yes. I like that. Yeah, mine is kind. My name is also Ria, so I have written realistic. Oh, great. I got two. Fine, I'll choose between. What about ravishing? Yeah, Rational. That, that's what came to my mind. I chucked it off. <laughs> Rational being? Rational, yes. Realistic. I like realistic. Maybe I'll stick to that. And uh, ma'am, excuse me. Uh, my starting letter is M. So always I am melt with other stock. Sorry, I didn't get you, ma'am. Always I am melting with others, uh, kindness or other stock. Okay, so melting, you are saying. Yeah. Basically. Yeah, fine, you can use it. Wonderful. Yes. Yes. I would always recommend you to put some music on if you have provisions for it. Uh, in your counseling setup, maybe a very light music when you're working together because that kind of further relaxes you. Okay. Um, music activates your whole brain. So it uh, also triggers a lot of creativity. Smart. Okay. So many people are writing. Great. Should it be the same first letter? Yes. It should be the same first letter of your name. <clears throat> Uh, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. Yes, yes. ma'am. Actually, I just wanted to ask if I uh, we have to put that adjective on the cover page itself. Yes, you can put it up. Okay. If you want to write more than one, you're most welcome. Okay, ma'am. Thank you. Okay. So maybe you can surround uh, your name with those adjectives. What if we don't feel about ourselves about the adjective we think? You can uh, you can think about something else also, but just keep a note which one you are uh, discarding. Okay, we'll have a few reflective questions on it. Okay, as I told you, I discarded one adjective, then I went with the other one. <coughs> I chose realistic. 
rational it's almost the same magic wow adorable natural and nice that's nice can someone suggest me from k other than kind i'm gushers okay. <laughs> okay great other than kind um kind kinetic kinetic yes, kinetic oh, oh that's yeah, fast pacing okay okay so once you are done with the writing part what you do is decorate your page with colors with uh, anything which you have that's great lavanya ma'am okay so what we'll do is maybe draw doodles maybe uh, color something in uh, draw designs around your name okay and i have a few reflective questions which you can work on as your assignment okay again there is no right or wrong way of doing it i'm sharing my screen you can maybe write down those questions you can also come up with your own set of questions we'll have that round quickly where others may also suggest if there are any other reflective questions which you can work on <clears throat> at this juncture you may also ask your client is there anything else which you want to reflect on so after you're done with all the drawings and engaging yourself in this particular activity what you do is there are a set of questions which are put on the slide it's not limited there can be more i would uh, love you all to share that as well so the first one is how did you feel about the positive word was there any feeling about it <clears throat> people who have changed the positive word also reflect why you are not uh, writing that word what makes you feel it's not worth writing it okay and the next question is do you feel you have that quality for me yes i feel i have that quality oh the mm -hmm. one is it uh, with the adjective you were referring to yes adjective okay. okay the one which you have written or the ones which you have written okay. uh, should we uh, note it down somewhere in the journal now yes okay after you do the cover page maybe the first page on the journal you can write it down okay writing is always helpful because that keeps a kind of a record of how you're feeling in that moment it may change over time so you can also have a reference point when you come back and read through you'll see how things change gradually when you're working on it and how does this make you very unique you know how does that adjective makes you unique or makes you special or makes you stand out from the others and if you feel that no this is not me this is not the thing which i have like how would you go about imbibing it or do you really bother if you don't have that quality okay so these are a few questions which you may ask yourself when you're engaging after the uh, today's class you can reflect on it complete the work because this will be part of your assignment and think about it reflect on how this word is attached with you and does it create problems does it uh, create a, a safe space for you it can be both ways because if i talk about my example being too much of a realistic person can also be detrimental so i need to reflect on that as well sometimes letting go also helps sometimes um uh, you know uh, not being realistic also helps or not always being logical and concrete with things helps okay so it can be both ways and if you did not have this quality how would it change your entire personality <clears throat> any other reflective questions which comes to your mind which maybe the entire crowd of 142 can talk about maybe a few of them like uh, like i'm like a a, a, a body uh, character sorry suppose you? Uh, my my please? first letter mm -hmm. of yes. so i wrote uh, i wrote simple simple okay. 
okay so 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 that defines my you know you know character like i am uh, in in real life as well i am very simple being but but sometimes i feel that uh, simplicity uh, ultimately uh, leads to uh, you know introvertness like it is very difficult for me to you know open uh, about about anything easily so maybe that is right. you know problematic so may we can you know define our characters as well yes absolutely so keeping that in mind maybe certain things which may help you to uh, not change your personality altogether but may help you in communication so here we can see a lot of communication uh, which you may uh, develop what do you feel about it truti ma'am next ma'am please don't be I am silent. Okay, so my reflection is yes, it is very difficult, very very. You know, um, you know, uh, about things. So me, you know, so much time, yeah, keep so much time to open about uh, any issue or uh, or having a normal conversation with anyone. Okay. Okay. so we'll come back to this once you reflect on it tomorrow i'll tell you how to proceed with your journaling like whatever whichever uh, procedures we'll be sharing with you maybe you can correlate find out the major themes in your findings from this particular activity and then take it forward something which you would like to change something which would be helpful for you to change okay uh, we are not saying that yes you have to change your entire personality altogether but certain things which can aid you in living a better life okay so this particular thing please complete yes, it maybe you can or uh, decorate the cover page reflect on the uh, reflective questions if you have any other questions you can always add in okay uh, and uh -huh. uh, we'll take uh -huh. it from here to yes one one reflective uh, question that came into my mind while i was listening to your interpretation of realism which was very different from mine so what yes. everyone can do is also oh. write down what that adjective actually means to them so i think absolutely. this will be a really uh, great reflective absolutely. thought absolutely you will see so many of us shared the same letter so many of us shared the name as well but when we are perceiving ourselves is totally different so as earlier also discussed there's no hard and fast rule that this will be this okay it will be a very personal way of understanding where we are going where we are lagging behind where we can work on or does it really matter as i placed it on the ppt does it really matter if i don't have this quality what if i don't have this does it really matter okay so ma'am think ma about these and put it yes ma'am i have a question uh, that what if i uh, am thinking of a quality uh, which is not resembling uh, the my first initial like uh, if i want to put it as caring and my name starts with a so the first uh, letter is a and i can write many adjectives with it but uh, there are other adjectives also which is uh, coming to me so will i write them down or uh, will i keep it separately uh it it would be great if you write it down no uh, problem in that but since we are focusing on our names which is our identity that's why we started off with the first letter okay so that kind of defines us and if you want to write something which is not related to your uh, letter of your name it's absolutely fine you can always write it down that means you have a lot of clarity and you have a lot of you know um, insight about yourself that's a good positive thing so you can always you're most welcome to write anything in all the adjectives which you feel defines you or you believe you have those qualities you can always go ahead and write it ma'am uh, okay sorry ma'am uh, i have one question because some of the clients they don't like our, their name so how they can be describe their self because they are eight the names 
okay. the phone rings. Yes, this is an interesting thing. Um, one of my students had this problem. So I don't like my name. I don't want to write it. I said, fine. Which name do you like? Which name would you keep for yourself? If you were allowed to write it down, write that down. That defines you. This is something which you have got from your parents or someone else who has given you. Now you have the freedom to choose your own name. Okay, so identify yourself with that. Or if they have problem choosing a name, you can always tell them that, you know, think of any character or anyone whom you can uh, relate to and you can write their names as well. You can also write an object's name. Okay, I got one thing. more. Oh, sorry. Yeah, yes, I got yes. one more uh, reflective question in my mind. Yes, uh, yes. We can also ask the emotion of that adjective or the name uh, that we yes. are having to it. Yes, yes. Yes, absolutely. You can have your emotions attached to it. Thank you for sharing. You can always uh, write down how you feel about this particular name or what is the meaning of the name which is written. You can always have this conversation. All this while, I did not know the meaning of my name, but when I did this activity, I did a little bit of research and it's a uh, Chinese word. Then I thought, okay, my parents did not get any other name to put on. Okay, so it doesn't have any meaning but yes it has a resemblance with the bird and you can always correlate that with your word how does a bird reflect what i want and i got my answers i guess so that's also kind of interesting how you relate your name to the meaning which it has Ma uh, another thing just one minute ma'am sure, uh, sure. thing which you can do is after you write this name you can always ask your whoever you're working with you can ask them to write down one name you would like to give yourself. Maybe they're comfortable with their names, they're happy with their names, but a name which they are comfortable with, you know, they would like to give themselves. And uh, maybe you can ask questions, reflective questions again, like uh, how would it be that if you, uh, you know, what would be the meaning or how would it be if you were called by this name or uh, why do you like this name so much? So that opens up a lot of Channels to express themselves, rapu build up is very fast. So, people who are very blocked, you can do with them. In fact, you can also work up your own sheet, you can guide them as to how to do it. Uh, when people are talking about their names, they become, you know, much more happier. This is a psychological fact. <clears throat> they much more happier when they are talking about themselves, their qualities. Uh, like Mama, I want to add something here. May I? Yes, please. Go ahead. Yeah. So as my name is Kashish, so I personally love my name a lot. And yes, it does reflect my personality as well. Mm -hmm. uh, if anybody doesn't know the meaning of Kashish, it means attraction or attractiveness. Mm -hmm. So okay. uh, the two main important adjectives that I came through was, uh, as I told you, kind was the first one. Then somebody suggested kinetic, but it, it sounds to be very technical and I'm not one of those. I'm, I'm a little more on a softer edge. So yes, I got to uh, have strike one more adjective that's called keen. So okay. I have drawn a, um, a logo sort of a way in which keen is written. Mm -hmm. And I would like to just share it once I'm yes, able to yes, on my yes. video. There is some uh, error. I don't know. I'll share it in my assignment when I'll share it. Absolutely. So here I just want to like to add something that if anybody would like to make Almost art never. as their own part of how like kind, simple as somebody was saying. Mm -hmm. So the most simplistic uh, artistic way of writing that adjective may help you uh, express it uh, better visually. Mm -hmm. I'm an architect by profession. Okay. And uh, creative enthusiast as by my passion. So mm -hmm. yeah, I love psychological things all throughout mm -hmm. my journey. I would yes. just like to add here that reflective portions really makes you self aware a lot about your own self. Mm -hmm. And uh, that helps to get what is there in your subconscious mind, which doesn't really come so casually. So Absolutely. yes, thank you so much for such exercise by attaching the most important thing with your name because it does uh, plays the most important part as you get to listen to your name yeah thank you thank you Kashish for sharing it was lovely listening to you as well mom Ma I had a question yes. um, when we are writing 
an adjective with the first letter of our name for uh-huh. example my name is anjali so i wrote um, amazing first with a because okay. that's the word i um, i mean it it is it is sort of a connection which is formed like um, i mm-hmm. mean to say when we think uh, of adjectives since childhood we are taught few adjectives uh, so how do you i mean and then when i introspected deeper i went with an another adjective which is anticipative so um, so i was just asking how do you overcome this like it is i mean i i feel i am amazing but um but it is co- sort of an association which is formed since childhood like i had attended another uh, session of yours mm-hmm. and you had mentioned about the colors of a uh, it was a tree i guess and um, you had mentioned that um, normally we draw green color leaves and uh, the bark is brown in color so mm-hmm. it is something we are associated with we have seen it yes. so yes. um how do we overcome this i mean like do, do does it take more reflection on our part to reach that uh, i mean stage see anjali when we have learned something uh, and it has become automatic for us it's very difficult to unlearn it but still your unconscious mind is wired like this even with a lot of external interventions uh, things will come out as it is supposed to be so if you have thought of amazing that's supposed to be there we are not going into why and what and whether we have learned it or not forget about that the first word which came to your mind was amazing and you write it down okay and if you are not comfortable with it the other word which is coming up that also has a lot of reflection in it okay so okay. once we do the artwork throughout these 10 days you will see an emerging pattern which is coming up time and again okay and as and i begin to okay. jump into conclusions right yes. away just go with the flow go with the activity okay. think about these reflective questions work on it and we'll come back tomorrow and rework on it okay so this will mm-hmm. be basically a string of things which we'll be doing okay and i had another question ma'am in the beginning you mentioned that art therapy is very helpful for uh, treating patients with anxiety or depression also right. so uh, could you please explain how like um, i mean anxious patients they they are not able to anxious or depressed patients they are not, they don't have the concentration or the motivation to do right. something creative right so they are already lacking it so is it for the mildly depressed people or uh, for the severely depressed one like how does it help see again i told you singularly art therapy doesn't help okay if only you keep on giving art therapy things it will never help that way if a person is reluctant on making art some day you have to stick to talk therapy they just want to vent out they want to talk it out they don't want to do any work they are too you know they are feeling too tired you cannot force themselves so as i told you you need to have your counseling skills intact you need to understand when they would be comfortable whenever they are comfortable you can just slip in a few activities which they are comfortable which is easy which is quick to do okay so okay. there are a lot of activities which you can do there are a um, lot of you know 2 uh, minute 3 minute activities which you can just whip up and then they give you the insights whichever is required and if they are comfortable doing it for a longer period of time generally that happens initial few sessions they are like reluctant no i don't know art i don't know this i don't know that but once they start getting into the habit of doing something physically that also helps in grounding when you are using these mediums i'll be talking about the medium different forms of medium tomorrow when you are using these mediums that also has an effect on you you know that kinds of soothes down okay stress is reduced your physical strain is reduced stress is all about physical strain piling up in your muscles so these activities generally help you uh, to a lot of catharsis and uh, you know getting rid of your physical strain which in return helps you to de stress okay this may not be applicable for full blown uh, hmm. uh, kind of uh, disorders but of course you can always have one or two sessions with them and check in how they are feeling okay only if okay. you are comfortable you can push more further okay thank you so much ma'am ma'am okay, i have, have two questions ma'am okay ma'am, let's take it are you going to interrupt yeah, it's actually about the homework only actually yes. like uh, what all does the homework can you please ma'am. repeat and ma'am can you please show the last slide again yes yeah, sure uh the Sorry, homework interrupt again yes 
Ma'am, is it okay if we leave if we don't have any questions? No, no. Yes, you may leave. Those who don't Thank have you, questions, ma'am. you may leave. You can watch the recording also later. I'll put it up on the YouTube channel. Thank uh, you, ma'am. The assignment basically, you have to complete this cover page, decorate it in any possible way, reflect on the questions which were, uh, you know, given, or if you have any other reflections, you can write it down. Uh, on the first page, you can write your reflections, how you feel about it, and. Uh, do a quick check-in now as well on a uh, one to ten point scale. How are you feeling right now after you have worked on this? It can be both ways. Your mood can go low. Your mood can go high as well. So let's do a quick check-in. Mine remains the same. Mine chewed up. I scored okay. seven. Great. Now it's okay. nine point five. <laughs> Okay, so self realization and self actualization that's great. It's okay. actually very much oh, creative. You get so much brainstorming thoughts in your own self, and that's really nice. Yeah. I can <laughs> see nines, you. a lot of nines. That's wonderful. So, I hope this helped you. Uh, this is not the end of the thing. We'll come back and reflect. We'll have one session after all our sessions where we come back with all our work and try to reflect on it. Okay, so that will be a kind of a conversation more. Okay, so we'll be sending you out mails uh, with the recording. And tomorrow, same time, 8 o'clock, we'll be meeting again. Thank you so much, all of you, for joining in. Excuse me, ma'am. Yes, Srishti. I have a question. Like, uh, we see small, uh, matlab, uh, little kids have do the doodling on the notebooks mm -hmm. so shall we scold them on that or we appreciate on them uh, see doodling is kind of an escaping thing where you are bored or you are not interested that time you kind of unmindfully doodle uh, it's nothing about demeaning them or uh, even appreciating them is just a natural way of growing up. We all did it, I guess. But someone who is doing it excessively, yes, that needs a check as to why the person is engaged in doodling so much. There might be a disconnection from the reality or maybe the environment which he or she is in. So try to uh, understand what experiences the child is going through lately. Okay, ma'am. Thank you. Okay. Thank you so much. Thank you, ma'am. Thank you. Tomorrow, eight o'clock, the same link. Uh, ma'am, one one last question. Oh, yeah, so today's assignment is uh, uh, the questionnaire that you have. I mean, the reflective you questions, right? Questions, yes, yes. Okay. Your reflective and, questions, and I would love to see your cover pages because um, you know, once you start working on it, you'll really feel glad that you did it. <clears throat> the front page. Should we of your share cover. somewhere, ma'am, these assignments? Yes, of course. Uh, we'll send you the link all together. Just keep it for, with you. Maybe on your social media platforms, you can put it up in your story and tag us. That way also okay. we can keep a record. We'll uh, save it in our, uh, you know, those thumbnails. We can save and it. Is it. And is it the same time every day that we are meeting at 8 p.m., ma'am? Yes, more or less. Only maybe Saturday, Sunday, the timings will be different. We'll let you know beforehand. Okay, okay so otherwise, tomorrow... All Tomorrow is 8 p.m. only, right? Yes, yes. Okay, great. Thanks, ma'am. All right. Ma'am, excuse, excuse me, Po. Excuse yes. me. Uh, sorry, I am I am attending this course from abroad, actually. Okay. Actually, I got this link and I got into it. I have not registered it properly. I don't know whether um, I am eligible to attend this one. or how Yeah, you're most welcome to attend, but uh, you need to register in order to get the mails because if you're not registered, we will not be able to send how, you the handouts and all. How can I go ahead with that? Uh, please go to our Instagram page. Over there, you have that link, registration link. 